Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and drama film called Ravenous. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Ravenous zombies have started to terrorize a rural village in northern Quebec due to an inexplicable outbreak. The mysterious phenomenon was first noticed at a racetrack while a driver was fooling around with a staff member. While they're kissing passionately, the driver catches a pale-looking woman staring at them intently. When he asks her what she wants, the pale-looking woman rushes towards them and bites the racetrack crew on the neck. The driver looks on in shock for a brief moment before he starts calling for help. With the plague spreading like wildfire, survivors have to roam around and try to find people who haven't been infected. One of the few remaining survivors is an elderly man named Rael, who runs as fast as he can to get away from the three zombies chasing him. Somewhere in the village, a young boy named Tikul wipes the tears from his eyes as he prepares to leave his home. But before leaving, he sets a horse free and grabs a rifle lying next to a freshly dug grave. In the woods, Bonin and Vezina entertain themselves with doctor jokes as they keep watch for infected people. Meanwhile, Celine drives around in the village in her car, searching for zombies to kill. When no one turns up, she stops the car and turns on the radio full blast to attract the attention of any infected people in the vicinity. She immediately grabs her machete when she sees someone emerge from a house. Celine furiously attacks the zombie as its blood splashes on the car's rear windshield. While she tries to calm down, an infected boy suddenly appears beside the vehicle and stares at her. Without a second thought, she drives away and leaves the boy behind. While Bonin and Vezina are driving back to their camp, Vezina suddenly notices a mother and a girl in the woods standing on the path. He recognizes them and says that the girl went to school with his child. As Vezina approaches them, Bonin calls out to him, telling him to leave them and deal with them some other time. Vezina hesitates to shoot them, fearing that the noise would attract other infected people. When he hears a faint wail, he goes deeper into the woods to investigate. Bonin suddenly notices that the mother is gone, leaving the girl alone on the path. As Vezina walks around the woods, he sees a boy hiding up on a tree. But before he could get a closer look, he suddenly hears the woman chuckling behind him. Bonin soon hears a shriek followed by a gunshot. With a bite on his neck, Vezina pumps his shotgun and shoots the mother as she lay on the ground. More zombies turn up behind Vezina, so he starts running back to the pickup truck. Back in the woods, Rayal manages to kill one of the zombies after him. Two other zombies run towards him, but he no longer feels like running. As the zombies get closer, Tikul arrives and shoots them with his rifle. Rayal, who has been bitten, tells Tikul that he had hesitated to kill the zombie because she was his wife. He goes on to say that the other two zombies that Tikul just shot were his sons. Bonin and Vezina stop at a field to catch their breath. Vezina says he would have withdrawn all his money from the bank and taken his child to Disneyland if he knew that an outbreak like this would happen. On the other hand, Bonin says that he would have approached a girl named Katie and confessed that he's infatuated with her. As Bonin keeps going, Vezina falls silent. Later, Bonin gets back on the road, saddened by the loss of his friend. Meanwhile, Celine stops by a house to check if there's any fuel in the oil tank outside. Two elderly women, named Pauline and Therese, appear and tell her to strip at gunpoint to see if she's been bitten. As Pauline checks Celine's body for bite marks, Therese inspects her vehicle. Pauline, seeing nothing suspicious about Celine, decides to offer her a beer. Celine tells them that they were the first survivors that she encountered in weeks. Therese lets her know that she can stay with them as long as she wants. Bonin stops by a hunting camp where he meets another survivor. After the other man learns what happened to Vezina, he goes to the back of the truck to chop up the body. He asks Bonin if Therese already knows what happened to her boy. Bonin says he hasn't told her yet. The man reveals that he has tied up a woman inside his cabin because she's been bitten. The woman, named Tanya, claims that a dog bit her. The cabin owner tells Bonin to avoid making too much noise with his truck and heads out to the woods armed with a rifle. Bonin enters the cabin and starts telling Tanya what will happen once the infection spreads. At first, the infected will feel nauseous, and then they'll notice blotches on their skin. Soon, they'll start feeling stronger until they see themselves chewing on other people's organs. Tanya tries to speak with a gag in her mouth, so Bonin removes it. She then tells him that the man plugged her ears, so she didn't hear anything he said. The woman begs him to release her, reiterating that a dog bit her, but Bonin ignores her and goes back outside. Bonin suddenly hears the cabin owner scream, so he goes back to the shack to untie Tanya. When they hear another scream, Bonin opens the door, activating the chime. 
He quickly takes the key off the ignition, realizing that the sound would attract the zombies. Tanya gets into the truck quietly, carrying her accordion with her. Soon after Bonin starts the truck, the cabin owner jumps in front of the windshield. Other zombies emerge from the woods as Bonin drives away. Just when they think they were safe, the infected cabin owner grabs Tanya from the back. Bonin yells at her to take the gun and shoot him. She screams as she pumps the shotgun and shoots the cabin owner in the head. Later, Bonin stops by on the side of the road to get rid of the cabin owner's body. Bonin tells Tanya that he's never seen her around the village before. She says that her father owns a cabin on Trout Lake. As they prepare to leave, Bonin decides to wait for a while to make sure they wouldn't attract any zombies when they start the engine. But as they wait, a man named Demers suddenly jumps out beside the truck and yells out to scare them. Demers, having no idea that about the outbreak, tells Bonin that someone tried to bite him. Demers then goes on his way to surprise his family without any clue that most people in the village are now infected. Rayal tells Tikul that he regrets his decision not to flee from the village sooner. When his family started to chase him, all he could think of was turning around and telling them he loves them. Rayal thinks that it was a stupid idea, but Tikul argues that it was not. The boy recalls when he shot his family after the infection spread to their home. His mother, who was bitten on the neck, is heartbroken as she looks at the lifeless bodies of his father and sister on the ground. She slowly turns to Tikul and forces a smile before turning back to the corpses. Tikul puts on a brave face as he points the gun at her and shoots. Bonin and Tanya stop by a farm to look for suppliers after hearing from Demers that the owner had turned into a zombie. Inside the house, Tanya hears thumping sounds around the house, so she quietly walks around to see where the sound came from. Tanya comes across a room and listens through the door. She hears nothing, so she decides to open it. As the door creaks, Tanya hears someone running. Inside the room, she finds a young girl trying to hide from her. As Tanya cleans up the white powder smeared on the girl's face, she starts warming up to her. On the road, Bonin tries to make the girl laugh by telling one of Vezina's jokes to her. The girl, named Zoe, just smiles at him, while Tanya gives him an irritated look. When they stop by a camper van to rest, they hear a woman on the CB radio, looking for little pup. Tanya asks Bonin who she was referring to, but he ignores her and gets out of the truck. The following day, Tanya relieves herself outside and accidentally steps on a mousetrap, causing it to snap. Soon she hears other traps snapping around her, followed by an eerie shriek. Tanya immediately crouches down on the ground and carefully looks around for any signs of zombies. When she turns around, she sees an infected man turning in her direction, so she lies down and slowly crawls away. To Tanya's shock, the zombie suddenly turns up beside her, so she runs away screaming. The zombie soon catches up to Tanya and tackles her, but Bonin grabs it and stabs it repeatedly as soon as it tries to bite her. Later on, Tanya starts ranting about her frustrations, saying she would be selling adult toys with Katie in a bikini on a hot day like this, but because of the plague, she'll never see her again. When Tanya gets inside the truck, Zoe tells her that she also misses her cousin T-Guy. They all fall silent, but their peace is soon broken by Demers, who suddenly jumps out beside the truck to scare them again. Demers warn them that something is happening on Route 8, so Bonin decides to check it out. When they get there, Bonin sees zombies gathered around a tower of stacked furniture. Before he could leave, an infected man sees him and shrieks to call the attention of other zombies. Tanya gets out of the truck to check on Bonin, but she turns back when she sees him running. Zoe immediately turns the ignition as soon as she sees them. Bonin drives the truck in reverse, with the infected people watching them as they leave. Bonin decides to go to Teresa's place and tell them what happened to Vezina. Therese slaps Bonin in the face and drops down to the ground crying upon hearing the news about her boy. Pauline recalls that the number of infected people has thinned in the last few weeks, but now they seem to be multiplying again. Pauline surmises that the infected people had nothing to eat outside the village, so they returned. Tanya asserts that someone probably blocked the roads to prevent them from reaching the cities. Pauline suggests that they should just barricade the house and keep quiet to avoid attracting the zombies' attention. She goes on to disclose that they have to ration their food since they are running low, but she assures Zoe that she can eat as much as she needs to because she's still growing. Celine warns them that the house is on the path of the infected people who seem to be gathering together. She suggests making the long journey to a bunker that will keep them safe. The group soon draws up their plans and gathers up all food that they can carry. Later that night, the group starts discussing their concern about Tanya's bite. Bonin tries to defend her, telling them it's just a dog bite, but Celine points out that he didn't actually see it happen. Tanya tells the group to include her before they make any decisions about her. Later on, 
they start hearing the snaps of the traps they laid out in the woods. Zombies soon begin running toward the house, so they head out immediately. They soon end up in the woods, so they keep quiet as they hide in the bushes and trees. Bonin, however, is out in the open with several infected people chasing after him, so he has no choice but to use his shotgun. A zombie suddenly grabs Tanya from behind while she's hiding with Zoe. As she struggles to break free, Zoe stabs the zombie on the back of the neck, allowing Tanya to get up and kill it. When another zombie appears in front of them, Celine attacks it with her machete. The group goes ahead with their journey and comes across a river, where they encounter T. Cool and Rael. Bonin notices the bite on Rael's thigh, so the two decide to go on their way without introducing themselves. The group comes across a farm along the way, so they start discussing whether they should go through it or use another route. Bonin notes that they could follow the river, but it will add another day to their journey. Pauline agrees to go down the river despite the heavy toll that it will put on her, so they all move on. Along the way, Demur suddenly jumps out from the bushes and yells at the group to scare them, causing Tanya to shoot him. As Tanya tries to explain, Bonin tells her that Demers had already been bitten, so she has nothing to worry about. The group soon comes across another tower of furniture with a few zombies gathering around it, so they try to pass through as quietly as they can. Meanwhile, Rayal and Tikul watch them from a distance. Zoe and Bonin run toward a pile of furniture to hide, but Zoe trips on a pail, catching the attention of an infected woman. Zoe stands still to avoid agitating the zombie. Rayal helps Zoe out by standing still in front of her to keep her out of the zombie's view. After introducing themselves to the group, Rayal and Tikul join them in their journey. The group stops by an abandoned house, where they find a note warning them not to go into town. The letter further states that the author goes to Route 113 daily to look for other survivors. The author ends the note by signing it as number 79. Outside the house, Bonin discovers a pile of bones under a tree. The group is suddenly startled when they hear screams. Rayal had finally turned into a zombie and bit Tikul on the neck. Celine runs over to them and kills Rayal. Outside the house, they discover that another zombie has bitten Pauline. Therese looks at Pauline in shock, but she soon regains her composure and shoots the zombie twice. In the woods, Celine tells Tikul that he went out for a manicure when her family got infected. She had played the ideal wife until that time, but due to the outbreak, she's no longer concerned about being perfect. As she tells her story to Tikul, she shows him a picture of her family. Tikul tells her that his real name is Remy La Traverse. Celine then walks out of the woods alone and goes back to the house to clean up the blood on her face. Therese asks Pauline if she put too much dill in the pickles that they brought on their journey. Pauline says she doesn't think so. She then turns to Therese and nods, hinting that she's ready. Therese tries to hold back her tears as she points her shotgun at Pauline. They soon come across a building, but they couldn't find anything useful, so they soon head back out. While they are walking through the woods, they start hearing the cries of a baby echoing through the misty forest. They follow the sound and come across an infected woman holding a crying doll. A few steps away from the infected woman, they discover a tower of chairs. Meanwhile, zombies have begun to line up around them. When the infected woman pulls the string of the crying doll, Celine takes aim to slash her with a machete. She hacks the infected woman when the zombie suddenly screams and alerts the other infected people of their presence. As the whole herd runs toward them, Lanin carries Zoe away, hoping to take her to a safe place. Therese stays behind and just watches them take off as the zombies grab her. Celine starts hacking away at the herd of infected people running toward her. Bonin decides to hand over Zoe to Tanya and lead the zombies away from them. Despite being bitten numerous times, Celine continues to slash the zombies with her machete. Meanwhile, Tanya takes Zoe into a tunnel and tells her that she's the strongest among them. Tanya leaves the child in the tunnel as the zombies continue to ravage their victims. An infected man soon enters the tunnel where Zoe is hiding, but Tanya arrives and plays her accordion to lead the zombie away from her. When everything goes quiet, Zoe goes back to the building and sees Bonin preparing to shoot himself with a shotgun. Bonin, who has been bitten, tells Zoe to leave him behind and find Tanya. Later, Zoe leaves the building on her own, carrying a shotgun. As she walks through a field, she finds Tanya's accordion on the ground. She brings it with her and leaves the gun behind. Zoe continues walking until she reaches Route 113, where she decides to sit and wait. Soon, she hears the noise of an engine and sees a Formula One car approaching. The race car driver, wearing a jacket with the number 79, gets out of the vehicle and walks towards Zoe. She smiles at the man and warns him not to continue driving down the road he's heading. The man thanks Zoe and takes her for a ride in his car to go to a much safer place.
Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.